Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a log equation. Well, sort of. We have ln x, which is the natural logarithm, and x being divided, and the answer is negative e. So, for example, if x is equal to 0, this is not going to work, right? Because it's, it's going to be undefined. So, x does not equal 0, we know that. And if x is equal to 1, then you get 0 equals negative e, which is also not true. So x cannot equal 1 either. All right? So those are special values that I'm just checking. Maybe x is something else. What is it? Let's find out. You can definitely guess and check, but let's put this expression in a nicer form. So first of all, notice that ln x over x is equal to negative e. e is Euler's number, which is about 2.7, right? That's all I know about e. And negative e is going to be negative 2.7. So it's a negative number for sure, right? It's a constant and it's negative. So ln x over x is negative. What does that tell you? We also know that from the domain requirements, x must be positive. Hmm, that's interesting because you can't log a zero or a negative number, right? In the real world. So you have a quotient who is negative and the denominator is positive. Therefore, the numerator must be negative. So this implies ln x is less than 0. Awesome. And what does that imply? If ln x is less than 0, that implies that x is less than 1. But at the same time, x must be greater than 0. You know that, right? So x must be between 0 and 1. So x must be kind of like a fraction. doesn't have to be because, you know, some irrational numbers cannot be written as fractions. But fraction is kind of like a, maybe a quotient, a ratio like 2 over 3 or something else. Let's find out. At least we know that x needs to be less than 1 and greater than 0. So we're going to manipulate this expression a little bit. So we have ln x over x equals negative e. Now we can write negative e in different ways. Since we have a quotient on the left hand side, I could probably write it as a quotient like 1 over What's the reciprocal? Negative 1 over e, right? Or I can do the following. ln x over x equals negative e. I'm going to write it as negative 1 over 1 over e. Now, if you look at the first one, x kind of corresponds with negative 1 over e, and ln x corresponds with 1. But ln x equals 1 means x equals e, so they don't work. And also, x you don't want x to be negative, right? You don't want x to be less than 0. So the first one is not going to work. So we're going to go with the second one. And notice that in the second one, in the second one, if x is 1 over e, ln x is also going to be negative 1. So we have that requirement, ln x equals negative 1, and x equals 1 over e, just implies x equals 1 over e. So we got x equals 1 over e as a solution because it satisfies the equation. But is that the only solution? How do we find out? So let's get into a little bit of calculus here. Uh, don't be scared. If you haven't done it before, it's fairly easy. So f of x is equal to ln x over x. And I'm going to go ahead. I just define it that way. Like suppose ln x over x is equal to f of x, a function. Differentiate both sides using the rules of derivatives. There were the you know, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x multiplied by x minus the derivative of x is 1 multiplied by ln x divided by x squared. Easy, right? And this becomes 1 minus ln x over x squared. And if you set it equal to 0, you're going to find ln x equals 1 and x equals e as our critical point. Now, let's go ahead and make a table. If you like the second derivative test, that's fine too. But here, our critical value is e for the derivative. And I'm going to go ahead and check the derivative to the right and to the left of e. So the derivative of 1 minus ln x. So if x is greater than 1, then 1 minus ln x is going to be negative because ln x is going to be greater than 1. Uh, ln x is greater than, sorry, if x is greater than e, then ln x is going to be greater than 1, and this is going to be negative. So we have a negative here and a positive here, which means our function is going to be increasing and then decreasing, which means it has a max at x equals e, but to be more specific, max at e comma 1 over e. That is the f of e. Make sense? 
Okay, great. So what does that tell you? Our function is going to be increasing, and this is zero, by the way, from zero to e. And if you remember, we our x value was supposed to be less than one, right? So it's going to fall in this area. So we have a strictly increasing function. And guess what? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And we're just going to conclude with uh, the result. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And uh, so let me just quickly summarize what I did here. So I kind of took at the, I, I looked at the domain and then I found out that x has to be between 0 and 1. And then I manipulate my expression, negative e, I wrote it as negative 1 divided by 1 over e so that I can guess the x value. Otherwise, you can't solve this equation like analytically. And then from here, x equals 1 over e seems to satisfy, which is cool, but is that the only solution? I use a little bit of calculus here, first derivative, make a table, find out that our function is going to be always increasing on the interval 0 to e. We don't care if x is greater than e because our x value, remember, must be between 0 and 1. So that's an important point here. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now and we'll conclude. All right? So, now what does the graph tell us? So here's the graph. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, I know, but this is e, x equals e, and the function has a maximum at e, remember? So our function is increasing on the interval 0 to e, and then e to infinity, it is decreasing. It's kind of hard to see because it's very subtle, but notice that our graph is going up and then slightly going down. Hopefully you can notice that, right? Okay, and if you don't, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit, then that way you can see the decrease a little easier. Okay, anyways, let's continue. So, now, we have the graph. What does the graph tell us? So, we are trying to find, solve the equation ln x over x equals negative e, right? So we're looking for the intersection point of these two functions, y equals ln x over x and y equals negative e. y equals negative e is a horizontal line that is below the x-axis. Right here is the intersection point, and that happens to be 1 over e. And that is the only solution because our function is increasing on that interval. So there's only one intersection point. And that is the only solution. And the solution is x equals 1 over e. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.